Okay, people. Hope you're doing great. Uh, here's what we got going on today. A little something I like to call absolute value equations. So uh, we're going to carry on with equations. Uh, hopefully we're getting more comfortable with them. Today's equations, just a little bit of a twist, right? Absolute value equations, right? We're, we're used to solving for a variable. Bam, here we go. We figured out we have some special case stuff going on with infinite solutions and no solutions. Uh, and then we get weird stuff involving absolute value. So let's just remember things about absolute value that we might have seen before. Anybody remember anything from absolute value? What do we got? Hmm? I think I heard it over here. That's right. So absolute value is always a positive number. Why is that? Because we're talking about distance, right? That's really what absolute value is. It tells me distance. We can't have negative distance. If I said go walk negative four miles, you couldn't do it. Anyway, uh, let's take a gander what we got going on here, okay? First thing we're going to do is evaluate different expressions with absolute value, right? So we've seen this before. We're going to substitute whatever value they give us uh, in here. I'm going to try to make this bigger. I don't really know if it's going to make your lives better or not. Who's to say at this point? Seems to be pretty awesome. Anyway, um, so evaluate this. So we're going to replace this absolute value expression with 5 plus 15, right? We're going to go ahead and evaluate this first. So 5 minus 7, I believe, to be negative 2. Okay, now we go ahead and apply the absolute value of that. So again, we're thinking positive numbers. So the absolute value of negative 2 is just 2. And shablop, there we go. 17 is already answered on this one. Okay. Um, let's see what else we got. Maybe they can make this a little bit more challenging for us. Uh, sure, why not? We can do this one real quick. Okay. Uh, same thing. Again, we're going to place this B with a 6. Absolute value of 17 minus 6. And we're going to add 23. So go ahead. This should turn into 11. If I'm wrong, somebody tell me. Did I do that wrong? No, we're all good. Okay, absolute value of 11, just 11. 11 plus 23, I believe 34. The greatest running back ever in the NFL wore that number right there, number 34. Figure that out. Okay. Um, all right, so guys, here, I want to I want to backtrack real quick. Uh, let's just, let's add a little something into this last one that we just had. Too bad I can't bring it back up. Uh, what if there was a number outside of this, right? Let's just assume that it was 3 times 17 minus B plus 23. And be careful, guys. When you write these absolute value bars, try to make them bigger because they look just like uh, a number that I like to call 1. And we don't want to mistake this for 117. That would be bad. So let's just go back to where we were a second ago. So we had 3... And then we were at, uh, what, 17 uh, minus 6. Yep. All right. Um, this really tells me to, what is this, 11? But I just, that's bad there. Uh, this says multiply, right? We think of uh, absolute value expressions, right, kind of like, uh, parentheses. So if we were to see something like this, guys, we're going to multiply this by 11 once we take the absolute value of that number, right? So in this case, it would still turn into 11, right? Then we would multiply it by this 3 and then add 23 to it there, okay? So I know this wasn't in the example, but I just want to make you aware that's how we would handle that if we saw it like that, okay? Awesome. Carry on with the fun. Here we go. Let me back out of this real quick. All right, so here's what makes absolute value equations. Let me come back into the screen here. Um, a little bit different than, than before. So a lot of our equations have had one answer. Some of them had infinite. Some of them have none. Absolute value equations will give us two answers, right? We have case one and we have case two, right? Case one, case two. Again, you can read through this on your own. Uh, basically, we take the expression... Um, that is inside the absolute value, and we're going to figure out uh, if it's positive, if it's negative. None of this stuff really makes any sense until we do an example, and then it will become, ooh, this says graph the solution set. Ooh, some graphing involved here, yes. Okay. All right, so here we go. So case one, case two. All right, so here's what case one looks like, right? Case one, we're going to put over here. Case two, you bet, that's right, we're going to put it over here. Case 
two. Okay. Our biggest mistake when we do these guys, we just do case one. We forget all about case two. We're like, I don't care about you. You don't exist. Get out of here. All right, there's case one. It looks just like that. What does case two look like, you ask? Great question. We're about to see. Uh, it looks just like this. 2x minus 1 equals, right? Ah, there you go. Case one, case two. It always looks like this, okay? Ooh, I just got a text message. I wonder who that is. Is it Coach Noel? It is. Anyway, uh, we'll worry about that later. So, yeah, that's right. Somebody said, hey, thanks, Marissa. I appreciate you telling me I missed the one there. Okay. Case one, go ahead and solve it. If there's other stuff uh, outside of this um, expression here, we need to move it over to the other side. I need to have just this absolute value expression before I really solve case one, case two. Okay? So here we are. Um, let's go ahead and solve this, right? When we solve this, we merely remove, right, the absolute value bars and just say, hey, 2x minus 1 equals 7. All right? We're going to go ahead and solve this. Again, nothing new here. Add 1 to both sides. 2x is 8. So x could be, sorry guys, we'll get that out of here. x could be the number 4. All right, that's one scenario. There we go. Okay. Second case is this one right here. So let's go ahead and solve this one. Again, same thing. 2x minus 1 equals negative 7. We're still adding 1 to both sides. 2x is negative 6. It's a pretty sloppy 6 there. Uh, x equals negative 3. Okay, so there's case 1, case 2. Um, then it wants me to graph the solution set. Again, we're just graphing two numbers, right? We're going to graph them on a number line. Uh, maybe we remember this, uh, you know, from previous years. Who's, who's to say if we do or not? Um, I need a little bit of room. I, I, I don't. Here, there we go. We got some room up here. Um, it can be, look, you, you don't have to make your number line super fancy, right? I need to identify the number negative 3 and positive 4 on this number line, okay? It literally can be as simple as this. Here's 3, here's negative 4, right? No, no, it cannot look anything at all like that. That is terrible numbers, folks. Uh, this shall be negative 3, this will be 0, and that will be 4. Now I think we can graph it. Um, it's just negative 3, it's just 4. If you wanted to have all the other little lines and all the little numbers in here, you could do that. Uh, I'm super lazy, and we obviously know which two points my number line is including, just negative 3 and just 4, right? I don't think we're doing anybody else. Sound good? All right. Whew. Okay. Nope. Like I forgot how to work everything all of a sudden. Uh, there we go. All right, um, I don't think I'll, nah, sure, we can keep graphing them, I suppose. I mean, really, it's not that bad. Um, absolute value expression of P plus 6 is equal to 15. Case 1, case 2, folks, right? So P plus 6, right? It's ready for me to go ahead and make case 1 and case 2. So here's case 1. We'll go ahead and solve it. P equals 15, subtract 6, subtract 6. Uh, 15 minus 6, I believe. Oh, that's what, what is going on there? Get out of here. Okay. Just to be the number 9. Okay. We're going to take this to make case 2. So case 2 is going to look like, hey, P plus 6 equals negative 15. All right. Solving with the same steps, right? If you've noticed, so we're just going to keep subtracting 6 here from both sides. So you're going to have P is equal to careful, negative 15 minus 6 is negative 21. So there's our two answers. Uh, we got 9. We got this tw negative 21. And we can go ahead and graph that on a number line. Again, doesn't have to be anything super fancy. You don't even have to make your number line really long. Uh, I'll say all the way down here is negative 21. Right? And then all the way, again, maybe if you want to be somewhat accurate, you can say, hey, here's 9. Okay? That's fine. Good to go. Uh, yeah, I like all that stuff. What else are they going to throw at us here, folks? Again, if you're watching this home, because maybe you weren't uh, with us today in class, or maybe in class, who knows what we're doing. 
Uh, maybe you guys watch this on your own. Uh, you can pause this and you can try these if you'd like to. So case one looks just like this. Okay? It's ready for me to solve. We're going to add three to both sides. Right? I get eight over here. Divide by two, I get four. Okay. Case two, very similar, right? Instead of being positive five, now we're going to solve for negative five. So 2x plus three equals negative five, right? If I had other stuff out here, we'd have to get rid of it first. Then we can make our two cases, right? But neither one of these examples did we have that. So we're still going to subtract three. Be careful, this turns into negative eight. And now this is negative four, okay? No, this does not always happen where we get opposite numbers, right, in case one and case two when we solve them for our solutions. This doesn't always happen, so don't think that it's going to be like that, all right? This one just happened to be like that, but they don't always do that. Um, okay, here's zero, here's positive four, here's negative four, okay? Again, we're just identifying what those two solutions are on a number line. Sweet. Um, okay, here we go. Let me zoom in super big, guys. Look at this one real quick. What do we notice? Think back to what we first talked about. Well, we didn't really talk. You just listened to me. Think about what I first said about the absolute value of a number, right? What kind of number is it? Say it louder. Ah, yes, it's positive, okay? This just represents a number. We're going to solve for x. We're going to figure out what number this is, right? We're going to put this in here. Then we're going to take the absolute value. Once we subtract 3, we're going to take the absolute value of that number, and we're going to get a positive number. However, look at the right-hand side of this equation. What do we notice over there? We got ourselves a little troublemaker, right? I like to call, <laughs> well, this dude right here, right? So this is a, a negative five. Uh, this can't happen, right? If we're going to try to solve this equation, this has got to turn into a positive number. So there is no way that this can ever happen, right? This, this is uh, nothing more than, right? Interestingly enough, no solution. Okay? Can't happen. Can't happen. Nope, 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 because this is negative. All right? I understand when we make case two, right, then we solve for negative, but that's totally different because here, I, case, it's telling me the first case, case one, is equal to a negative number, and that's not going to happen, right, when I take a positive um you know, quantity of x minus 3, and we take the absolute value of that, okay? So watch out for those. Those are kind of, uh, it's a little bit, of, as Mr. No likes to call it, a little bit of trickeration. We're not going to get caught up in any of that because we are too good for them. Holy smokes, that's some big writing there. <laughs> All right, here you go. Um, again, you know, I try to get better. I noticed when we're watching the videos, the text didn't show up very big, so I figure, hey, I can easily use the Zoom button. All right, so we read through this problem. It tells me the average temperature for Columbus on a Tuesday was 45. Awesome. Uh, the actual temperature uh, during the day may have varied from the average by 15 degrees, right? So when something varies, that means it could be bigger or it could be lower than that. So here's my 45 degrees. It could vary, right, plus or minus that 15 degrees, right? Think about that. We're going to do some other stuff with this. Um, it says find the maximum and minimum temperatures. Okay, I'll let you lock in your guess. In three, two, one, go. Okay. Um, that's right. So we figured out, hey, if it varies by 15 degrees from this number, 45, that means it could be 15 above that, 60. It could be 15 below that, 30. I like letter D. What if they said write an absolute value equation for it? Hmm. I know they didn't, but you're going to have to when you do your book work, uh, your quizzes, and your homework. So I might as well show you how to do that, all right? And all of them, guys, kind of take this same general structure or format, okay? Think about what we got. So we're going to have our absolute value expression. It's going to equal, right, some number here, okay? 
okay? We want to put the number that something varies by over here, right? So this could be the, I'll just say number it varies by, right? Or, you know, plus or minus. So in this case, that 15 degrees, right? Because it could be 15 above or it could be 15 below. Not really sure, but it's in that, in that window where it's going to vary by. So that's the number we want to put out here. Not the 45, right? This is... If we put that there, think about what would happen. We'd get like negative temp. We'd get just wouldn't work out. Okay. Um, you can pick whatever variable you want to go first. So here, let me give myself some more room here. So let's go uh, variable. Right. That will go first. We will always subtract the number. Okay. We can't screw this up. If we always put a subtraction there, if it's a negative number. Double negative will kick in and we'll add it. But we're always going to subtract um, whatever, good luck reading that, whatever like constant number we get. In this case, that's the temperature, that constant, hey, it should be about 45 degrees, right? Or hey, the car should get, you know, 25 miles per gallon. But it could vary depending upon if you're in the city or if you're on the highway by a few miles. You know what I mean? So these are the things we got to look out for. So if we were going to use this structure, and guys, you can kind of write this down, variable minus constant number, okay? That's what goes in my absolute value expression, equals the number that we, you know, are varying or changing by, okay? So if we use that, hopefully you've all locked in that this one should turn into x minus 45 equals 15, okay? That's what we're after. If I solve this equation, right, like I wonder, did I get this right? Of course I did, because I'm awesome, okay? Uh, but think about this. We could solve this case one, case two, right? What are we going to do to solve this? Well, we're going to add 45 to both sides. In case one, it looks just like this, 15 plus 45, bloop, 60. In case two, this changes to a negative 15. We're still adding that 45 over there, so it's negative 15 plus 45, 30, right? So it still checks out. So if you're not sure, you know, how to write the equation, but you know for sure what the two right numbers should be, this is a good thing for you because now you can double check your work, right? Maybe you flip-flop these numbers, you solve it. Hey, that's backwards. They got to be the other way around, okay? So anyway, um, that's what we got there. Okay, here we go. Write an absolute value equation uh, from a graph. You, you might, maybe I sent you here because in class you weren't paying attention or you forgot how to do it or who knows what. And I said, hey, go watch the video. Start here, end here. Uh, here it is, okay? So just like the slide before, right, there's a common structure that we can use to write this equation. Now look, I'm not an idiot. I know you guys are smart enough to be able to go through these four equations and solve each one of them for case one and case two. What two numbers are we looking for? Well, we're looking for these two numbers here, six and negative two. One of these four has to solve to six and negative two. It just has to happen. So that would clearly be a uh, appropriate strategy, all right, to figure this out. But we're gonna be able to figure it out with some math. Because let's be honest, if we didn't have these here, we gotta figure it out on our own, okay? So here's how we do it. Um, I need to find the middle point, right? The, the distance that's halfway between these two dots, okay? So here they are. So I don't really, really care how we do this, right? You can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, halfway between something or two dots that are eight units away, half of eight, four. So one, two, three, four. Great. Seems to be pretty good, okay? Um, again, if you want to know the distance between any two things, subtract their numbers, right? Take the absolute value of that. So you could be super mathy and say, hey, I'm going to take the absolute value of negative 2 uh, minus 6, and that turns into negative 8, and the absolute value of negative 8 is 8, and that's their distance. That is perfectly fine. To figure out how far apart they are, there it is. If we want halfway, divide it by 2, we still get this. Okay, so this is an important number for me here. All right. Um, 
All right, and then notice, guys, this is the number positive 2, okay? So the halfway distance between these dots, right? We, this is 4 units. Same thing here, right? Look, these are like my upside down curly brackets. This is also 4 units, okay? We are going to use 4 units and the number 2 to write our equation, okay? So here's how this all gets put together. Again, think about what we did before. I'm just going to throw in x because that's typically what we use, right? So we're going to go x minus some number equals some other number, okay? Again, 2 and 4 uh, have to go in here somewhere, okay? Um, so think about what number is constant and which one do we kind of vary by or we go plus or minus by. Right? Think about that. So, like, I could be four units to the left, or I could be four units to the right. Right? But we know we're going to start here at two, right? So I could be four left, or I could be four right. Okay? So maybe you've seen, right, the, hey, I could be four left, or I could be four right. It could vary either way by four. That's the number that goes on the end. Okay? This one here, again, we're always going to subtract whatever number we're at. If it's negative, people, I'm telling you, we are going to get a double negative, and you will change this to addition. It didn't happen in this case because it's positive 2, so we just throw the 2 in there. Okay? So I think this is our equation. Uh, yeah, look, I found it right here. Here it is. Could we check this to make sure? You better believe we should, right? So case 1 would say, all right, this looks good. Let's go ahead and add 2. 6. First answer. Case two, make this negative four, right? So it's negative four, we're still adding two, negative four plus two, negative two. There's your two answers. So guys, that's how we write these um, equations from a graph, okay? Uh, with that, guys, I think we're done, right? I don't think I have any more slides yeah, for me to, to yap at for you. Um, so yeah, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, so I'm going to turn you loose. You guys can stop listening to me. So we've got some book work. We've got some quizzes uh, to do and everything else. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this, and I will see you guys later. All right.